Hi everybody and welcome to lecture 8. Today we're going to look into building regression models and this is part of the part 4 of the course and what we are looking into today is that we want to build a model to forecast outcomes from data you have. So you have data for your y variable and you have like several x variables okay and what is the best model you can build okay and what we are going to look into today is when should you add or remove variables from your model so this is is uh covered in chapter 24 in the book and next week we are going to look into categorical variables which are taking uh, like uh, either zero or one like yes or no uh, variables okay so uh, additional variables what is the the trade-off for the uh, the uh, variables and uh, we want to look into the the benefits of statistical models like uh, multiple regression modeling uh, but in in multiple regression modeling you also have some 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 uh, uh, risks and it's it's quite uh, enticing to to just add variables add x's right and the more x's you x variables you you add to the model uh, the the higher uh, the r squared uh, which means that that you have explained explained more uh, variation in in the y variable in the in the the response variable uh, so so why why don't you just why don't we just uh, add more variables like uh, we have almost infinite data uh, online why don't we just add more data and and get a really high r squared and we can say that we have explained the the dependent variable by using our model um, and and the case is is that adding variables is not always better is not always better because uh, you have to make sure that your model makes sense so so can you explain that yeah you have the the y variable it can be profits or it can be sales or it can be whatever um and 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 you're explaining this y variable by using for example uh, an x variable and you're explaining this y variable by using another x variable and you should be able to say how does this this x variable actually affect the y variable and does it have a positive effect or or maybe a negative effect and you have to do that for each and every one of of these x variables so you have to use your logical sense uh to to make sense of the model okay because every time you're you're presenting your model uh, people are going to ask you about this uh, this uh, uh, relationship between each and every one of these x's and the y variable and maybe they will ask you are there any linkages between these uh, these uh, these x variables okay so um even with a large data set, uh, 
there is limited variation for uh, your model to use to estimate a large number of slopes. So for example, uh, we, we had the Starbucks example. Uh, and uh, we had our sales, okay, that was our, let's see, our y variable. And we had the, the, the number of competitors that was an x variable, okay. So we try to explain the sales by, by looking at, at the number of competitors. And uh, what you did was that uh, the multiple regression model gives you the effect of each and every one of these x variables holding each and every one of the other x variables fixed right holding fixed the median income in the area so so the income in the area that was another x the size of the store was another x and the quality on the product that's another x quality of the customer service and advertising okay a lot of other x's here but but um <coughs> What you can do is that that um, uh, you can just add in a lot of variables, but uh, if these variables have an effect on each other, if they are correlated, then then that might might be a problem, and we're going to look into that today. Okay. So. What we are going to do is to build a multivariate regression model uh, and and we are going to look into collinearity the 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 correlation between the x's and and uh, we're going to look into data mining where you have a lot of data and and you use uh, a regression to to kind of make sense of the data you don't have have uh, a model uh, first and then you look for data uh, in data mining you often have like a hunch uh, that this might fit into into a model uh, let's look at the data to get some ideas okay and I already mentioned that we are looking into chapter 24 today and of course we have a, a case study so today the case study is Sony stock and we want to build a model that de describes returns on stock that is 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 percentage change okay um, the percentage change per month Uh, on stock of Sony Corporation, okay? And uh, one of the most fundamental financial models in, in, in finance is the, uh, the capital asset pricing model, the CAPM. And the CAPM de describes the relationship between returns on a particular stock and returns on the whole, whole stock market, okay? Um, and and um, this is often proxied by using an index. Like uh, like the 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 S and P five hundred in the U S, for example, um, or a global index. Um, okay, so according to theory, uh, market rewards investors for taking unavoidable risks. Unavoidable risks. Uh, what is that? That's the, the market risk. Um, this is like risk which cannot 
be diversified away and and what do we mean by diversified well if you buy one stock you kind of have both uh, like a market risk uh, the risk which which affects the whole market in addition to company specific risk and 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 the 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 uh, the um, uh, company specific risk is the idiosyncratic risk so so what you have is that you have market risk and you have idiosyncratic risk and and the idiosyncratic risk the company company risk can be uh, removed by instead of putting a hundred percent of your money into one stock uh, you partition that money onto several stocks and and the company specific risk of all these stocks they kind of um, negate because if one company uh, does very well another company might not do very well so so they kind of uh, uh, balance out okay so so you have diversified away the company specific risk so uh, so your portfolio mainly has has market risk the risk which which affects the whole market okay so and and the the uh, the uh, the capm says that well you are not rewarded to take on company specific risk you're only re rewarded uh, for taking on the the market specific risk okay the risk which you cannot uh, get away from so um the the idiosyncratic risk this is like company specific um risk okay and and uh you get no compensation for for uh, adding on risk okay only for adding on market risk so <clears throat> um, this the, this cap m it can be uh, represented as a single uh, regression uh, model okay because uh, what you have is is the 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 uh, return uh, of Sony stock equals um, like uh, uh, an intercept plus um, plus uh, uh, a slope times the 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 return. Um, uh, of the market okay uh, plus of course uh, an error so so what you have here is is this is your y and 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 this is your x so the the return the percentage return uh, of Sony stock is explained by by the intercept plus the the slope or maybe I should say uh, the parameter values here um, okay plus epsilon okay so so here you have one y okay uh and 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 you have 
one x variable. So so this this is a simple regression. So and and often let's see often uh, these returns are, are are collected on a monthly basis. Okay, so uh, this this y variable is the percentage change in in Sony's value um, or Sony's stock, and and the the return of the market is is the the percentage return right on an index because we have to be able to to measure the the development in the market and and that's why we use indexes and and this this intercept this intercept um and the 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 uh, uh b naught is is often called alpha because alpha is just this greek letter and which some some statisticians use for for the the intercept, and and the the uh, the slope is often called the the beta of of uh, the stock. And what you have is that if you have this this uh, might be zero, and then you get this slope. This is the the uh, percentage return on the stock, and this is the percentage return on the market. And here you have the the slope, which is 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 the beta, and here you have the uh, the uh, the uh, intercept w w which is called alpha okay so the the beta it it kind of provides a a a measure uh, a number uh, of the degree of correlation between that stock and the rest of the market and or or how how that stock um uh, varies based on on the the variation in the market okay so so given given a certain variation in the market uh, what's the expected uh, variation in the stock or, or what given a certain uh, return of the market what is the expected the average expected return uh, of the stock. Okay, and so so this is the the beta and the alpha. It provides a measure uh, for excess return. Um, how much return the stock um, uh, outperforms the market? Or underperforms the, the market per month, um, uh, um, uh, kind of uh, adjusted for uh, the 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 market risk. Okay, so we'll get back to that. I'll explain better. Okay, and. Uh, what we can see in the market, uh, this is from from uh, like uh, finance. Dot yahoo. Dot com, and and if you go to finance uh, yahoo. Dot com, then then you can find uh, information about Sony uh, Corporation stock. Uh, which was fifty nine dollars at this October twenty one, twenty first, <coughs> and uh, they they uh, give you they give you uh, the beta for the stock, and and this is uh, three years worth of data. This is really the the result from the regression. Um, 
this is the slope from the regression and uh, by using three years of monthly data okay uh, which is uh, 36 uh, da data points uh, they get a slope of uh, 0.96 okay um, and you might wonder why why would you make such a regression uh, if if someone else has done the regression for you well this is three years worth of data maybe you want five years worth of data or ten years worth of data or or only two uh, years worth of data maybe you don't want monthly data you want daily or or weekly data right so uh, and and to beat the market to beat the market you have to use other methods than the market does okay so not that i say that it's easy to to beat the market because it isn't most people don't beat the market so okay so uh to get on with the the sony stock case study and we want to uh, to uh, by the by by using this regression we can actually uh, answer some questions okay and one question is is what is the relationship between returns on Sony stock and returns in the broader market okay so uh, this is is uh, what is the the beta of the uh, the Sony stock this is the slope okay and why would we care about this well imagine that that uh, you have a stock and and uh, there's no uh, there's no way of hedging your your stock for example in 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 Sony stock there are a lot of uh, like futures contracts you'll get to that in your your finance course uh, you have some futures contracts which you can use to to kind of uh, lock in your possession okay if you don't want to sell your stock but you want to like um, have a guarantee of the future value of that stock you can hedge your stock like lock it in with futures and uh, then if that future correlates one to one with the the stock it's no problem but what if you have to use uh, like a futures contract based on the the development in the market to hedge your your stock then you would like to know what is the optimal hedging strategy like how many futures contracts do you need to to secure your position in the stock okay so uh, that's why why um, this this uh, cap M model uh, is is uh, quite practical you can actually find the the optimal hedging strategy okay and and in addition uh, this is uh, by looking at the slope and in addition you can answer the question how is Sony's share price performing relative to the markets and markets as a whole uh, then you're looking at the 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 intercept the the alpha okay or, or I can just the beta and here you look at the alpha okay and and uh, the whole market is is out there looking for alpha okay because positive alpha is is good and negative is bad okay so the the data that we have 
is that we have 70, 17 years of monthly data, not only three years which, which uh, Yahoo Finance uses. So we have 204 da da data points uh, from Sony stock and from the rest of the US stock market. Okay, uh, so what we have, we have our response variable, the Y, uh, which is the monthly percentage change in value of Sony, Sony stock. And this is uh, Sony change. And in addition, we have, have our X variables. Our X variables. Uh, monthly percentage change in the US stock market. So this is the market change. Um, and, and if you were to, if you were to uh, present this model to your boss or, or a group of, of, of investors, uh, then you would have to uh, tell them how you measure the value or or the the returns of the US market is this the uh, S&P 500 index or or is it the maybe the Russell I think it's two L's uh, uh, 3000 and and uh, the S&P 500 index is like a market value weighted index of the 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 performance of the 500 biggest listed companies in the US and the Russell 300 uh, 3000 index is is the value weighted uh, index of of the returns of of the 3000 uh, biggest companies uh, so so in, in the Russell 3000 index you have a lot more uh, smaller companies okay and which which and and there are so many other indexes you could use but but the the s p 500 is is the the most used index uh for for measuring the the um, uh u.s stock market uh per performance you also have the uh the the dow jones the dow jones industrial average uh which is not uh, like a uh, value weighted uh, uh, average. Um, it's it's only a simple average of the thirty largest companies um, on the U.S. Uh, stock uh, stock exchange or the stock market in the U.S. And in addition, you can use a uh, monthly percentage difference in returns between small and large companies. Uh, this is the 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 market cap. The 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 market capitalization. Uh, of the stocks, so so you take uh, small stocks, or uh, small companies, and you take big companies. And and you just measure the difference in in returns between them, okay? And you can uh, also look at the monthly percentage difference in returns between growth and value stocks. And the way you measure the uh, the difference between growth and value stocks, it's it's just to look at at uh, the the market price the market capitalization and and you divide it by by uh, the the book value the book value of assets okay and and if if this ratio is 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 large for example for a tech company which doesn't have a lot of book value but has well it, it is worth a lot of money then this this uh ratio is large and then you would have have a growth company okay 
a growth company. Growth company is is large ratio, okay? And value stocks, that would be um, buying uh, a company or buying a stock which which has a lot of a lot of 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 of, of uh, assets behind it, right? Um, <clears throat> so, for example, uh, a company uh, which uh, has has uh, some some uh, uh, factories or or something, okay? Uh, that would be a low ratio. So, so then you just look at a group of companies with a large ratio. That's the 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 uh, 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 the 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 gross stocks, and you look at a group of of uh, companies with the lowest ratio. That would be the uh, the value stocks, and you just take the difference. You measure, okay, how did the one of the portfolios uh, do compared to the other portfolio and you just take the difference uh, so that would be the the uh, four different uh, x variables we have and uh, i think it's uh, time for a break <laughs>